Hello and welcome to the final video in the Edge Racer 4 HDSI Users video series where we will cover using some of the other powerful Edge Rater templates. An Edge Rater template encapsulates rules, scans and trading systems from the experts as well as analysis that is unique to Edge Rater. Remember from the previous video that running any template in Edge Rater is as easy as 1, 2, 3 where you first find and select your template you then choose a symbol list to run the template against and then you press the run button to view the report. And you can find a complete list of all EdgeRater templates on the website at www.edgeRater.com forward slash products forward slash template gallery and you can get to the same place in the EdgeRater application by clicking on the binocular icon in the template library. In this video we'll cover some of the other powerful templates outside of the HDSI template category and how they can be used in conjunction with HDSI data such as industry group indexes. So let's dive right in. In the introductory video we took a look at the seasonality report in EdgeRater in conjunction with the warehouse industry group indexes. So I wanted to go a little bit more into detail about how to interact with that. So once you have done your generate indexes from warehouse, if you're doing that on a daily basis, you're going to have your warehouse indexes industry symbol list. So you can select that and then you have then a list of the 174 industry groups from HDSI and EdgeRater has generated those indexes within the program so it's able to run some of these templates on those indexes. So I'm going to hit run on the seasonality now template and immediately I have come to the report viewing screen where I'm shown what has happened in the past 10 years for the next uh, two week period, one month period, two month period, three month period and so on. And when you interact with EdgeRater reports you can sort and filter. Sorting is normally done by single clicking on the header row or the head a column in the header row so if you wanted to sort by one month average up just single click and the first time you sort you've got a reverse sort and the second time you sort you have a descending so the first one that appears in here is renewable energy equipment in the one month uh, time frame so this means that over the past 10 years for the next one month period starting from the close of the last trading day which is 12 8 20 the renewable energy equipment uh, industry group index has had an average of six percent over those 10 years six of those years were up years and four of those years were down years so one of the things you can do when you have edge racer and hgsi together is extract your industry group indexes as we have done with the generate indexes from warehouse but that also gives you if you remember uh, one of the things you did from HGSI was to save the securities.htm so the warehouse file gets saved as an htm file and part of this generating indexes converts that htm file into a warehouse spreadsheet and one of the things you can do in edgerator is open up that spreadsheet which I'm going to do right now and locate the place or the hierarchy the folder in your folder hierarchy for the warehouse archive and it's going to be in HGSI and you, sh you should find a warehouse export in there which is the folder that you created to start with but once you've generated your indexes from the warehouse it's going to generate for you a warehouse archive which is where it stores all of the daily archives of the warehouse in a spreadsheet format so I have one generated for the very last trading day which is 12 9 20 or 12 8 uh, 2020 I should say generated on 12 9 2020 but it's for 12 8 2020 so I can just open that up in EdgeRater so it's opened up in a separate tab and it's it's just a view of the warehouse essentially in a spreadsheet format but one of the good things about doing this is that now we have two reports showing they're actually linked together so what I like to do here is rearrange the 
reports so that one is above and one is below and I can do that just by dragging into you see there's a, a separate area here so I can drag to create a, uh, a stacked view of reports so now uh, we have in the top view you have the, also the warehouse essentially in the bottom view you have the seasonality report and you'll find that by clicking in the seasonality report the warehouse report will filter to show just the industry groups that have been selected uh, below here so the industry column in the warehouse report is now filtered to e-commerce discretionary if I'm clicking on that um, if I click on renewable energy equipment then the view has been filtered to renewable energy and so I can immediately see all of the stocks that are part of that group and then if I click on any of these stocks I then will get a chart of uh, those individual stocks so it's a good way of sort of filtering down from industry groups you find a seasonality of an industry group something with upcom upcoming good seasonality you can then view in the warehouse and you can see the stocks that make up that industry group and then you can click on each of those stocks to see a chart of the of the stock which is which is pretty good now of course all of those stocks have their own individual seasonality as well and so another step that you can do is to go back over to templates and take the warehouse all securities group which is automatically created when you do that and generate indexes from warehouse and run seasonality on that so I'm just going to hit run here and this will take uh, a, f a, f a few minutes because it is going through 9411 securities to calculate the seasonality for the past 10 years so uh, I'm just going to let it progress okay it's coming up to finishing the processing so now it's created another report on seasonality but this time for all of the securities that are in the warehouse and what I'll do for clarity's sake is just drag that one down and uh, so that it is in this lower area too so now I've got my two seasonality reports in the lower area the first one is for the industry groups and the second one is for all securities and because the all reports that you have open are automatically linked together you now have a way of see viewing the seasonality of the individual stocks and so the way that you could use this is look at the seasonality now and first of all click on your uh, whatever group that you're interested in you'll note that the warehouse now is filtered to show just those stocks in that industry group and now if I select one of those stocks and then click over it onto the seasonality for the individual stocks you can see that it has automatically selected the stock that I selected in the warehouse so now I'm looking at JKS and I can see immediately the seasonality of, of JKS and I can just cycle down through the, the stocks that, that are part of that industry group in the warehouse and immediately the stock will come to the top of the report in this view down here of seasonality and this works the same way for any report generated from EdgeRater for from any of any of the templates where it makes sense to do this in that when you click on something in one report it will bring that stock to the top of the list in the or to the top of the view in the other report so that you can immediately immediately see that report for the stock that you've clicked on and then of course once you have the seasonality now selected down here you can find over the next month what has the best seasonality out of all the stocks so we'll click on that and uh, go to the very top of the list and you uh, should pay attention to the number of up years versus number of down years because some of these stocks obviously don't have 10 years of data and so what I like to do is filter using the drop down this is common in any edge rater report if you see a drop down it's a filter ability and I can say I'm going to filter on the number of up years and I want to see at least seven up years okay and I can then sort by average here so now I'm looking at the highest average over the next one month period and they have at least seven up years out of those ten years okay so now China net or CNET is uh, is one that uh, comes to the top of the list 
And if I click on CNET down here, you'll note that the warehouse has now moved CNET to the top of its list, to the top of its view. And so I can go uh, across the warehouse and actually see all of the uh, fields of the warehouse and, and what they are saying for, uh, for CNET. Uh, just a quick tip here on looking at some of the reports. Uh, in some cases, you'll see that there is the title area of the report um, takes up too much space. So you might want to remove the title area as much as possible. So you know when I do a scroll down here, it's only scrolling the uh, lower part of this. And because I've now got two reports stacked on top of each other, I don't have a lot of room here for uh, showing the actual information. So what you can do is you can select the report that we're going to try and get rid of the header area here, select it and come up to the top and say freeze panes, which will, because they are frozen, we're actually unfreezing those panes. We can then scroll to just show the header row, like here, and then say freeze panes, uh, or first of all, select it, the cell that you want to freeze at, and say freeze panes again, and now it's gonna freeze uh, to the header row. So it just creates a little bit more area for, uh, for viewing. And now another tip when you're working with reports in EdgeRater, if you find something interesting, so you've we've done the seasonality of the entire stocks in the warehouse, we've got that listed here, and we're now cycling down through this list and just taking a glance at the charts to see if there's anything that stands out as interesting. If you find something that is interesting, and, and I'm gonna say CNET um, is interesting, I'm, I'm not saying uh, for real it's interesting, but as an example, if you thought CNET was interesting, you can just click on the Add to Favorites button up here, and that's added CNET to a list of favorites. I can open that list of favorites with the button next to the Add to Favorites, and you'll see what's been added. It's got the date that you added it to the favorites, which is 12-9-2020. It's got the source, so the template that it was added from. It's got the symbol, a description of the security and the date that the report was created uh, for. So the last bar of data for the report. And you can add your own comment in here and that could be anything you like. We'll just put a little test comment uh, to take note. <laughs> you can make this as long as you like. Okay, and press enter. And so that's now saved to your favorites. Come up to here to where it says save and just click on save. That's gonna be saved on the hard drive permanently and now um, let's say we had another stock of interest we've we've come down to uh, something else in this one month column a nine and one up here WRN looks interesting I'll say add to favorites and then I'll click over to the favorites report up here I'll say this is another another to watch okay and this favorites watch list works in the same way as any other report in that it has a symbol column and so if I'm clicking on the an item in the favorites watch list my chart will update to show the symbol any other reports that are open will also update to bring that symbol to the top of their list and if I have annotations on my chart turned on it's going to show the comment that was added in the comments field so you can go through from various reports produced by various templates and add things to the favorites watch list for looking at later. And when you come back in at a later time and you say open a favorites watch list, you'll cycle down through these and the annotation will point to the bar which you made the note for. And that may be at some point in the past if you're coming in several months later or several weeks later. Um, but it will just remind you of what you are watching. So it's a great way to keep track of stocks that you uh, find interesting. Okay, we're going to move on to options analysis next. So in EdgeRater, there's a category of templates called options analysis. And if I select that, there is currently one template in there called options IV ranks. So I'll select that template. And for this template, I'm going to choose my list of CBOE weeklies. 
And the CBOE weekly is, is a list of 500 approximately, there's 552 in here, stocks that have weekly options associated with them. And there's extra data maintained by the EdgeRater um, data provider, the premium data provider in EdgeRater, which it doesn't matter if you have HDSI um, set as your default data provider. If you also have EdgeRater premium data, you're going to get um, the data for the implied volatilities of these uh, CBOE weeklies as well. So you have your CBOE weeklies selected and you just press run on here like any other template. And that's going to go through these 552 stocks and get a report for the implied volatility and also the historical volatility. Okay, and just to make this cleaner or clearer, I'm going to close this top view down. I'm not going to save changes to the warehouse just so I can get a larger uh, view down here. Okay, so option IV ranks uses the implied volatility of the options and IV30 is using the implied volatility of a 30 days to expiration option or a simulated option if you can't actually if there isn't a 30 days to expiration option available there might only be say a uh, 24 days to expiration and the next one might be a uh, 35 days to expiration then there is a point where you can calculate doing a regression down to what the 30 day the simulated 30 day IV30 is and that's the way that VIX is actually calculated and the calculation that's used in EdgeRater for calculating IV30 um, there are actually 12 different implied volatilities in EdgeRater ranging from uh, IV3 all the way up to IV720 but they're all calculated in exactly the same way that uh, VIX is calculated but IV30 is something that's very similar to VIX because VIX is a 30 day to expiration calculation so this gives you the actual number for IV30 and I can sort by that so we can find the highest implied volatility stocks in here so currently Chesapeake Energy has the highest implied volatility out of all the stocks followed by Hertz but what is also interesting is the IV rank so some stocks are naturally more volatile than others and the, the premium in the options is is more uh, than other stocks so it's useful to know what the rank is over a one-year period of your IV30 number and that's where the IV30 rank column comes in so here you can see that even though MNK has a 297.5% implied volatility, which is the highest of all of the stocks. The rank is only 85, meaning that it ha has actually had a higher implied volatility within the past year. So a good thing to do here is to sort by IV30 rank. And if you find something with a, a rank of zero, it means that the implied volatility is the lowest it's been in a year and so if you have a low implied volatility it means that there's the premium in the options is is forecasting a less of a move in the in the stock over the next 30 days than it has out of any days over the last one year so these are interesting stocks to find if you think there's going to be a move in a stock and you want to play it with options then if an option has, or if the stock has a low implied volatility, then the option premiums are going to be cheap. And so you can use the IV number to choose an appropriate options uh, strategy. And very low implied volatilities, it might be best to outright buy a call or a put. There's also historical volatility here. The difference between implied and historical volatility is that the implied volatility is calculated by the price of options and historical volatility is calculated by looking back over the stock price over the past uh, 30 days the HV30 is 30 days and figuring out a volatility just based on the price movement uh, and so a number that's given in here is the historical volatility minus the implied volatility to see if there's any difference or discrepancy between what's happened in the past 30 days and what is expected to happen in the next 30 days and you can sort by this HV30 minus IV30 as well. So here you've got a case with uh, with Hertz that the historical volatility over 30 days has been 487%. And you can see on the chart that it's 
uh, how that came about. It's a very low price stock at the moment and uh, it's had these huge percentage swings. So it has a quite a huge historical volatility. Um, but the implied volatility for the next 30 days is about half of the historical volatility. So it's a high, a high number there. So if you think that the prior 30 days is any sign of what's going to happen in the next 30 days, um, then the implied volatility is actually quite cheap. Uh, but you have to have that conviction. And obviously that is not going to uh, apply in every situation, especially if a stock like this has had this, this huge move. There's a, there's a good chance it's actually going to settle down and, and become less volatile over time. But the best forecast for what's going to happen to a stock in any situation is, is not um, looking back at prior bars, looking back at history, but it's really looking at the options implied volatility numbers because that's real people, real traders, betting real money on the movement of the stock over a certain period of time. And also in this report we have the six month IV30 versus HV30 uh, and the three month IV30 and the and the one month too. And you can sort by any of these as well. And that uh, difference between that the one year and the six month and the three month is just it's using the same IV30 number and the same HV30 number but instead of saying is that rank the highest it's ever been in a year it's now saying is that rank the highest it's ever been in uh, six months or three months or, or one month. So the options IV is a great template to use to look at what traders are forecasting price to be in the future and with this report there is a layout that's quite useful with the whole idea of options you don't actually have to run this report to use this layout but the options analysis layout is extremely useful one of the most insightful layouts in edgerator this information isn't available to most traders um, and what we have in here is a expected move uh, bands essentially so these are calculated based on the price of um, of uh, the implied volatility and you'll notice when I clicked to a new cell in here and I'm showing a different symbol the chart changed back to the chart that's been configured for this template uh, I specifically wanted to see my options analysis chart and so what I can do is turn off linking to the template layout so now when I cycle through to different stocks it's not going to change back to the chart that's been configured for this uh, for this template report okay so the expected move bands are what price was what the options prices or, or implied volatility essentially was forecasting the move to be uh, over 30 days and so if a stock goes outside of these bands it means that it's gone beyond what uh, traders were forecasting uh, and so that's quite a significant moment when you go outside of the uh, the IV 30 bands um, there's another layout in here that has the percent inside listed and if you look down at that area of the chart you can see how much time the stock is spending inside its expected move bands um, which is currently 68 percent which is I think that's that's exactly what it should spend inside those bands so it's interesting that those numbers actually match up but now with carnival it's outside of those bands and uh, and so that's a significant moment uh, to pay attention to another great thing about this chart that you won't find many other places is the middle area of the chart is now split to short-term implied volatilities medium-term implied volatilities and long-term implied volatilities so the IV30 the 30-day implied volatility is part of this medium term and it's the blue line in this medium term uh, implied volatility but you also have short term which is the 3 7 14 and 21 implied volatility and you also have longer term 120 180 360 and 720 so all of those numbers are calculated um, by EdgeRater and shipped down if you are a member of the EdgeRater premium data you'll get the implied volatility data coming down uh, to your computer in your daily updates 
And here's another tip for using the options implied volatility charts in EdgeRater. The options views, the chart layouts, have an expected move cone attached to the very last bar of the chart. But because the, the chart is not showing any future bars, you can't actually see the cone. You, you know it's there because if you open up formula parameters, you can see that you have EM cone offset as one of the chart scripts in this area. Now in order to see the cone, we'll need to add future bars to the chart. And that's this uh, expand right days option up here. And if you just set that to something like 60 days, you'll notice the scroll bar is giving you a bit more room to move to the right. And so now the expected move cone is showing you where options prices are forecasting stock price to be at various points in the future. And this is based off of all of the implied volatility numbers that we have ranging from IV3 all the way up to IV720. And what you should see is that this cone will intersect the expected move bands at the, the 30 days in the future because the expected move bands, these bands are calculated using IV30. You can tell that because also in the formula parameters, EM bands 30, we have the days to expiration set to 30 up there. So EM30 bands are forecasting where price should uh, be contained 30 days in the future. And the cone gives you a forecast of expected move. Price should be within this cone 68% of the time all along the path of the, the cone. Okay, and now we're going to take a look at what was one of George Lee's favorite templates, the linear regression template. The linear regression template can be found in the hot topics category. So go over to EdgeRater, find your hot topics category, select it, and then look down through the list of templates to find linear regression, standard deviation, channel analysis, and select that. I'm just going to run this against the CBOE weeklies list. Remember, you can run this template against any symbol list that you have. So I'm just going to hit the Run button. And the report that is produced is split into different areas. So you have a 5-day linear regression, a 10-day linear regression, a 21-day, 63-day, 126 days, 189 days, and 252 days. And they are divided up like that because each one of those divisions of trading days makes a round number in terms of months. So 252 day regression is equivalent to a one year linear regression. And each of the columns are repeated within those groupings. And so if we take a look at the one month or the 21 day uh, set of columns, we can find a direction for the linear regression, an annualized percent of the regression channel, the percent B number here, which actually is not what you would normally know as percent B with Bollinger Bands, but it's really the position of the close price in relation to these linear regression uh, channels. And then there's bandwidth, which is an indication of how wide the regression channels are. So a lower bandwidth means that there is a less variation in a move. A good sort on this would be to sort by annualized percent and I will do an ascending sort and click again to get a descending sort. So now I have the highest annualized percentage at the top. Now, this template report is linked to a linear regression chart. So we have to make sure that we've turned on link to template layout over in the chart area. And then when we select a symbol over here in the report, you'll see that the chart is now showing a linear regression channel of the correct time frame. So here we're looking at a 21 day linear regression channel because I clicked in the 21 day group of columns. If I clicked over in the 10 day group of columns, you'll see that the linear regression channel is now showing a 10 day channel. And here it is on the five day channel, which is actually a down sloping regression. And then if we go over to the, uh, let's take the maximum one, which is a uh, one year and you'll see now the regression channel is uh, set to a year. So that's how that works. But if you're interested in trading stocks on a shorter time frame, say for instance, a one month time frame, then take a look at the 
one month regression channels. And there's a lot of things that you can discover from this template. You can find stocks that are that are moving in a longer time frame, but are retracing in a shorter time frame by doing very sorting and filtering of these columns. A quite an important column here is the bandwidth. Um, a high bandwidth indicates that this channel is very wide. And a wide channel means that even though it's sloping up and has a very high annualized percentage, it's a wild ride at this point in time. So you can do a filter straight away for bandwidth. So if I drop down my filter list and I'll say I'm going to filter for numbers less than, and I can choose any number, but for let's start with a 0.2. And so now I'm showing bandwidths that are a lot uh, narrower. I'm still sorted by annualized percent. And so now I can see stocks that are moving in a very consistent, within a, a quite a nice range here uh, in the up direction. So here you have Nordstrom, which has an annualized percent to growth of 657%. Now that's calculated in EdgeRaiser by taking the very last price and continuing this channel for one whole year and then seeing what the price would have ended up at after a year and then taking that price and figuring out the percentage change from the very last bar over here. So you immediately have a nice set of stocks at the top of this list that have consistent moves in a up direction. The percent B column is useful when you're just glancing through this report and you want to have an idea of where price is in relation to the channel. So if percent B is anywhere near zero, you know that price is at the bottom of this upward sloping channel. And if the percent B is very high, and the highest one I can see in here is a 81%, you know that price is towards the top of the channel. So that could be useful for if you're looking for pullbacks to uh, the lower part of a, of a rising channel. And on the other side, of course, you can look for downward sloping channels, and you can find which are the steepest downward sloping channels and whether they have a consistency about them uh, in terms of the bandwidth. And then again, you can see where price is in relation to those bands. So one thing that is quite useful is if you have an idea of trading on a one month time frame, is to do the sort that I've just done, which is by, uh, first of all, filtering to bandwidth less than or equal to 0.2, or less than 0.2, I think it was, sorting by annualized percent. And then if you're really looking for pullbacks, you can either just use the percent B column to figure out where price is in relation to that channel, or you can come back to one of the lower time frames and look for stocks that are in a downslope on a lower time frame. For, so for instance, AMBA here in the lower time frame has this downward sloping linear regression. I can see that it's towards the lower end of that uh, channel over five days. But then if I look in the 21 days, I can see that it's an upward sloping uh, channel up here. But I could also see that directly from this one month or 21 day column because I can see that percent B is the 1%. So I know it's right at the lower end of the band. So that's the linear regression template. It's a very powerful and useful template. You can run this on your list of uh, warehouse all securities and just get an idea of which stocks in your list are experiencing strong up moves in various time frames and whether that up move has a consistency, i.e. A, a low bandwidth. Okay, moving on to the percent B buckets per symbol template. The percent B buckets per symbol template is located in the hot topics category, as you can see from this list of all templates. And if I select the hot topics category and then just look through my list to find percent B buckets per symbol, select that template and I'm just going to run this against the list of CBOE weeklies. Okay, this report is split into three areas that are repeated. So there's the daily bucket history, the weekly bucket history and the monthly bucket history. And within those columns, there's the percent B bucket number for today, which is in the zero column. And then what it was one day ago, 
two days ago, three days ago, etc. Uh, if we're over in the weekly columns, then it would be this week's percent B number, and then one week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and obviously for the months, it would be this month's percent B number, um, and then one month ago, two months ago, three months ago, etc. But I'll stick to looking at just the daily percent B bucket history. Another important column in here is the bucket move, which is just a calculation of the current day's bucket minus the previous day's bucket. So the zero column minus the one column. And you can sort by bucket move to find out which stocks have got large moves. So you can find impulses very easily with this template. So Grubhub has a six bucket move, six minus zero, six bucket move. And it's the highest bucket move in that list of stocks. And you can see that we're looking at the very last bar here. I'll turn annotations off because that might get in the way. Uh, and I can also see on this chart, we've got volume come in. The chart is also configured to show the Bollinger Bands because this percent B is all about Bollinger Bands. And so Grubhub has some interest coming into it with a large bucket move. You can also see directly from the report without looking at the chart that one day ago, it was below the lower Bollinger Band. And so you can tell immediately from this that it's a stock that has been suffering recently and then has this huge bucket move. Uh, also with lows, similar idea. Now it's towards the top of the Bollinger Band. It's at a nine level in the buckets. And remember, buckets are just divisions of the Bollinger Band, dividing the Bollinger Band into 10 uh, buckets, if you like. And then the bucket number is where price is in relation to the Bollinger Bands with a zero value indicating it's below the lower band and an 11 value indicating that it's above the upper Bollinger Band. Another sort that you might want to do on this report is to look at stocks that have a 10 or an 11 in today's column only. So I'm going to filter to 10s or 11s. And then I might want to then sort by where the bucket was yesterday. And then if I do a click, keep clicking on the various columns, uh, and I'll get the ascending sort, the descending sort, ascending sort, descending sort. Uh, by doing that, I've actually stacked all of those sortings. So the very last thing I clicked on was the the f uh, five days ago, and that has the, now the primary sort, but the other sorts maintain their position. So in fact, if you wanted to have the zero as the very uh, last sort that you've done, you'd actually have to do that in the opposite direction to the way I just did it. And now that I know I've got um, the 11s are my primary sort, then it's the one day ago a bucket number, the secondary sort, the third sort is the two days ago bucket number. So these are now the consistent, the very uh, consistently above their upper Bollinger Band uh, stocks. So it's an interesting area to look at. These are things that are really, really moving. And Bollinger Bands are an indication of it's based on historical volatility. And so if volatility is low, the bands are quite narrow. If volatility starts to um, get a bit higher, then the bands widen. And if a stock can consistently get outside of the Bollinger Bands on the upside, then you can get some quite rapid moves. But also the other side of that is that Bollinger Bands can be considered um, when you touch an upper area of a band, a point to watch out for to see if you're going to get a retracement back through the bands back down to the lower band. So, but this template just gives you a heads up as to what's happening. I like most templates and a very quick way to scan and analyze the market in terms of percent B buckets per symbol. You can use this template uh, in combination with the percent B bucket migration template. That template gives you the breadth of the S&P 1500 or whatever list you run it against. And this is now drilling down into each of the individual stocks in whatever list you run against. So that's percent B buckets per symbol. Okay, now moving on to the relative strength ranking and indexing template. And from the trading template list, we can see that relative strength ranking and indexing is contained in the Pro Tools category. So we go over to EdgeRater, we find the Pro Tools category over here, and then select Relative Strength Ranking and Indexing. And you'll notice that this template has quite a number of parameters that you can set. 
generally, when you look at a template before you run it, anything that has this orange colored background, any cell there, is something that you can change. They have good defaults set in, so you could just go and run the template with those defaults. But these are things that you could play around with before you run the template. So I'm going to keep using this list of CBOE weeklies and I'm just going to hit run on the template without making any changes. Now this template being a Pro Tools category template has quite a number of calculations and specialized calculations that are going on and so it will take a little bit of time to finish running and I didn't pause the video there so it has finished running on those 500 odd stocks that are in the CBOE weeklies list. For this report I won't bother looking at the chart, so I'll just hide the chart and give me more area to see the report. And I'll just explain a bit about what you're seeing here. This, the index charts worksheet of the report is really a summary of everything that went on in, in running the analysis. And it's showing three lines. The first line that it shows by default is a rotating index of the 90 to 100 level. I'll explain what that means in a minute. The, th the middle line is uh, an index of a comparative stock, the comparative stock you do set in your templates before you run the template. And in here I've got SPY. The index component is SPY, so it's comparing against SPY. That's really what SPY did in terms of uh, movement over that time. And then the other line in that's on by default is a 0 to 10 rotating index. So what do I mean by rotating index? There's a relative strength function that you set before you run this template. You can choose different functions and if you click on the choose button you'll see uh, what it's set to and you can choose different ones from within here. So the relative strength in here is a relative strength based on percent change using one day and it's using the output RS from that function. So it's a one day percent change. So in the report viewer, the way that it's calculated is it takes a start date, the start date you also set over in the template before you run it, so the index start date and the index end date. And it's taking your list of stocks, dividing them up into whatever thresholds you've defined, and by default there are uh, 10 levels, so it's dividing them up into deciles if you like and rotating into the groups every day that meet the relative strength levels. So for instance, the, the 90 to 100 relative strength levels is rotating into the, the stocks that have got the, the highest one day percent change and it's rotating into them every day, holding them until the next day, essentially uh, selling them, you could think of it like that, and then creating another list of stocks that have that day's highest percent change and so on. So it's a rotating index, whereas compared to a static index, which takes those stocks that meet the criteria on day one and doesn't change them. So static indexes stay the same components of stocks that are in there. And then you can see that progress going forward. But the rotating index is very dynamic that it changes its component stocks every single day. So from here, and the date was set to the 1st of January 2020 through to December 9th, 2020, you can see that if you had taken that group and traded each one of those groupings, then the 90s to 100s has a, a value here of 209.74. And this number, you can directly relate this number to being the percent change. So you start at, down here at exactly 100, and if you get to 200 at any point, it actually means that you have uh, doubled the starting value. So 100% gain, essentially. So if it's at 209.74, you know you've got over 100% gain in this particular group of stocks. So an interesting thing to do would be go back to templates and then change your, your percent change number, just a simple change, to be a five day percent change. Click on OK, and you can see that this is the percent change five days. Everything else I'm going to keep the same. I'm just going to run the template one more time. Okay, so now you can see the difference. 
you now have the 90 to 100s now have a, a 166 value so that, that is worse than the, the previous run on the one day percent change these are five day percent changes and now this only has a 66 percent change from the starting value of the index the comp should always be the same at 11458 if you compare that back to the previous one because that's just using spy starting value ending value finding a percentage difference but then you'll note that the 0 to 10s have actually done better than they had on the one day percent change so on the one day percent change if you rotate it into the worst tenth uh, of the stocks in their one day percent change then you'd have ended up with a 3% gain whereas on the 5 day percent change you're rotating into the worst based on their 5 day percent change you end up with a 59% uh, gain on those stocks another way of interacting with this report is the 90s to 100s are interesting the 0s to 10s are interesting obviously because they're at the, the, the limits but you can just click in each of these cells over here and it will add those indexes into the chart so I'll take off uh, all of them we'll probably have the comparison on there because that is SPY essentially how is SPY done over that period of time and let's just uh, for instance we'll, we'll put on the 70 to 80 rotating index and we'll put on the 70 to 80 static index and now you can see the difference between a static and a rotating index the static index figured out what the rankings were on day one and it held that those stocks for the whole of that time and this is how that group of stocks performed 30 percent gain um, the rotating index every day changed into a new grouping and that had a six percent gain whereas spy had a 14 percent gain since the start of the year the index chart sheet is the sheet that is shown by default when you run the template but there are other are other worksheets within this report the dashboard for each instance is a summary of what currently is the top 10 ranked symbol the bottom 10 ranked symbols the biggest ranking change to the upside and to the downside and then the fastest acceleration up or down the way that the report is calculated it calculates a rank value in this case it's the five day percent change so it's given uh, an actual value puts that into one of the worksheets it also creates another worksheet with the close price of the stock in another worksheet it figures out the percent rank so the percent rank worksheet is the rank of these rank values over here remember we've got the rank values in directly from this relative strength function and the percent rank is just sorting them by the percent from 0 to 100 then there's a possibility of doing an average rank uh, we've got one day average set by default so it's not actually doing an average but if you wanted to average out the ranks you can smooth out the results uh, there's a rank change worksheet which shows the percentage change from one rank to another from one day to another uh, the rank acceleration worksheet and then the actual indexes this is a calculation of the rotating and static index values on a day-by-day -day basis they all start at the very beginning of this worksheet or the very the date that you said you were going to start doing the index calculations on they will start with a value of 100 and then every day they change based on the components of those indexes up to the final day and this is the worksheet that's used for drawing the chart so the chart gets its data from from that worksheet so that's how that all fits together and works a very powerful template you can run this on any group of stocks you can run them on HDSI industry group indexes you could run it on say a list of sectors or if you have your own list of stocks that you are trying to get rotate into the strongest of, of your own group each day then you can definitely try this report on that grouping and see how the value of, of your indexes has changed over time so that's it for relative strength ranking and indexing and now we get to the last template that we're going to look at in this video and that is the 220 EMA upside breakout template and I wanted to show this template as a different type of template from the other templates we've been seeing and this template implements a breakout trading strategy from the stocks and commodities magazine and the category for this template is 
TASC, which is stocks and commodities. And so what we have to do is go into Edge Rater, come down to find the stocks and commodities category. Uh, and TASC, by the way, stands for Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities. That's the full name of the magazine. And we'll look for the 220 EMA upside breakout template. And as he explains in the template info, uh, it says the template implements the upside breakout strategy of the 220 day EMA breakout system as described by David Landry in the 1996 article in Stocks and Commodities magazine. It's a simple trend trading system with clear entry and exit rules and aims to capture big gains from trending stocks while cutting losses quickly. And there is a link to the article in here. They have uh, Stocks and Commodities magazine have online versions of all their articles. So if you're not a subscriber, then you can just purchase individual articles, which is quite handy. So sticking with the CBOE weeklies list, I'm just going to hit run to run this template. And this time the report will show several different areas. There's the first status set of columns saying whether the system is currently in a trade in a particular stock uh, or say whether the trade was entered today or exited today. You can see if there is a buy alert so that you need to be watching for the following day to see if the level uh, of entry gets met. There is a current open trade indicating that trades that have been taken in the past, it will tell you the entry date for the trade, the entry price, the number of bars so far in the trade, the stop for the next day, you might need to adjust your stops, and the intraday long stop. And then it will tell you the actual dollars gained in the trade and the percent gained in the trade. And then there's another, it repeats those set of columns, but for the prior trade that was made in that particular stock. Uh, and the default sort on this list is percent gain. So the very first one in the, in the list with the highest percent gain is VTIQ. It's been in a trade for 28 bars. And if we double click on this, we'll see the chart. And the chart layout has been updated to show the 220 upside breakout in the bottom area. So whenever there is a one value, see the blue line goes to a one value, it means there was a trade on. So it went to a one value here, uh, the trade was initiated and it's still in a trade. And you can see that is 170% gain in VTIQ. The next one is Riot, that's currently at a 100%, 109% roughly gain uh, and so on. You can go down through this list and see all of the currently open trades and what the gains or losses are in those open trades. If I do an ascending sort by percent gain, then I'll find stocks that are in negative territory based on this trade. So here's a here's a stock that met the entry criteria and the entry criteria were met on this bar here. The, the trade was signaled for entry at this point, Aurora Cannabis, and the stock has since pulled back and it's currently at a 25% loss from the entry price. And some of the other stocks that are in losing positions here, Kronos Group, Fastly, Continental Resources, etc. So you can come easily see which stocks are currently in trades and whether they're winning or losing. At the moment there's far more in winning trades and some quite healthy winning positions. I'll click over on the Enter Today column and I can see that there are, and I did a two, two clicks on there. When you click the first time, maybe the sort is in the opposite direction to the one you're looking for. So click a second time and it will be sorted in the right way. So we've got Eli Lilly and that trade based on the close price of the, of the 12 nine bar was entered. Also, also Weyerhaeuser was entered all based on the entry rules for this trading system. And the entry rules are quite straightforward. I'll just briefly explain what they are. Let's take an example of uh, Lily, and it's a 220 EMA. So there's a 20 EMA on this chart. I'll look at the formula parameters. You can see that EMA 20 is on the chart. And EMA 20 is the red line here. So a stock has to be above the 20 EMA completely for two consecutive bars to fire an entry. So the first bar above, completely above was this bar here, the second bar was completely above here, and then the entry is fired 
when price gets above the high of the second bar. And so the entry was fired over here. So they were entered or exited today. Let's find exited trades today. So there's a couple here. And if you look at exited today, if you go over to the prior trade columns, then you'll find out what the percentage gain was on those trades. Uh, and the exit criteria is when any part of the bar touches the 20 EMA. So it tries to get you out quickly, but tries to keep you in a trend. That's pretty much like a lot of trend trading systems uh, try and do. Now, if you're actually looking to trade in this system, then you want to have an alert for the next day. So let's see if there are any alerts. So there, there's an alert here with SHY. And let's just come down until we find something that looks a bit um, sensible. And here we have an alert because there have been two trades above the 20 EMA, two days where the bar has been completely above the 20 EMA. And you now have a long entry stop at 590 because it's got to be 10 cents above the highest of those two bars, essentially. So 10 cents above that, that's your entry level. You could have that in your trading program now as a long entry stop. If price did go above there, you'd be doing that trade based on this system. And then for if you are in a trade and you want to know where your exit's going to be, you've got the next day long entry, long exit stop and you have an intraday long exit stop. So you can put your stops in the market. If you put them in on a day when the market's open, you put them in as intraday stops. If you're putting them in overnight for the next day, you put them in as next day uh, stops. And so you'll automatically be ta taken out if the stop is hit. So that's that for the 220 EMA upside breakout trading system template. I hope you found this video series useful and interesting and seen that when you combine HGSI investment software with EdgeRater Pro 2020, you have a very powerful combination that can help you succeed in the financial markets. What you've seen here is a flavor of the powerful information you can get when you combine these two independent software programs. There's much more to both HGSI and EdgeRater, and your next step should be to take a trial of the programs. To get a free trial of HGSI software, go to highgrowthstock.com and press the free trial button. And if you go to edgerater.com to the homepage and click on the try it now button, you can immediately download a free 14-day trial with unlimited data and features. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video series. I hope you enjoyed it, and I wish you every success with your trading.